Hello everyone, this is Paleo Nerd back with a brand new video. This time I will be taking a quick break from analyses to go a little bit in depth on Megalodon, everyone's favorite giant prehistoric shark. More specifically, the idea that Megalodon might not be extinct, and may in fact still exist in our oceans today, just waiting to be rediscovered. After all, if coelacanth survived extinction, why not Megalodon? We'll get to that, but first a quick refresher on anyone who has been living under a rock lately and hasn't quite heard of Megalodon. Megalodon is an extinct genus of bivalve mollusks that lived from the early Devonian to the early Jurassic, about 412 to 182 million years ago. The genus, which translates to big tooth, is named after the bivalve's resemblance to teeth, and it consists of five different species, which have been found in Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Americans, and, oh, wait, you mean the shark. The shark, known to many as Megalodon, is one of the few prehistoric animals to be typically referred to exclusively by its species name. This may have something to do with the fact that it hasn't exactly been placed in one consistent genus, switching from Carcharodon to Megasolachus to Procarcharodon to Atodus to Cacaracles. But for the sake of this video, we'll use the genus that most paleontologists seem to agree on, Cacaracles Megalodon. Megalodon was formerly thought to be closely related to the great white shark, but is now considered to belong to a family of sharks called Otodontidae, which diverged from the ancestors of the Great White during the late Cretaceous period, and lasted until the late Pliocene. Regardless of its classification, Megalodon is considered to be one of the largest sharks to ever swim the oceans, with estimates ranging from a length of 10 to 18 meters or 32 to 60 feet long and weighing anywhere between 12 and 60 tons, although many of the larger estimates are quite unlikely. Although commonly depicted as being a larger great white, the real Megalodon was probably more heavily built, and some scientists believe it may have more closely resembled the basking shark or sand tiger shark. Megalodon lived from the Aquitanian age of the Miocene Epoch to the Pliocene age of the Pliocene Epoch, about 23 to 2.6 million years ago, and would have filled the niche of apex predator, eating anything it could bite into, from seals to sea turtles to fish to even land animals that happened to wash out to sea. But fossil evidence shows that it suggests that the preferred prey of Megalodon were whales, especially baleen whales. Although the baleens of baleen whales of today are the largest animals to ever live on Earth, the baleen whales during the Miocene and Pliocene were much smaller, mostly due to being preyed on by a giant shark. Although many seem to think that Megalodon lived unchallenged, Meg did indeed face competition in the form of the formidable raptorial sperm whales. Relatives of the modern sperm whale which possessed large teeth on their top and bottom jaws, with the teeth of some raptorials being larger than the teeth of T. rex. While many of the raptorial sperm whales grew to about the size of an orca, the largest and last of the family, Leviathan, grew much larger, being slightly smaller than a modern sperm whale, at a length of 13.5 to 17.5 meters, or 44 to 57 feet long, and a weight of around 60 tons. Although the raptorial sperm whales had a relatively short reign, Megalodon would later begin to decline by the late Pliocene as scientists believe the climate changed drastically at this time as the earth began to cool, causing the ocean currents to shift dramatically. This changed the migration patterns of the whales that Megalodon preyed on as they began to move away from the warm coastal areas Megalodon preferred and into colder regions where Megalodon couldn't survive. This, combined with the recent appearance of orcas and great whites, is the current theory that paleontologists have come up with to explain the rather sudden disappearance of Megalodon from the fossil record. But what if they were wrong? 
The idea that Megalodon did not go extinct is com quite common throughout popular media, as many movies depicting the shark often explore this idea. This fringe theory is best known from the Meg series of books written by science fiction author Steve Walton, as well as the infamous Discovery Channel pseudo-documentary Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives, which aired during their Shark Week. Although the Meg books are completely fictional and the Shark Week special included disclaimers stating that it was not a serious documentary, the general public seems to have completely eaten up this idea. After all, how cool would it be if a giant shark thought to be extinct turned out to be alive and well in our oceans? Actually, that would be terrifying for anyone who wants to go swimming or go in the ocean ever, but besides that, pretty cool, right? Although Meg and Shark Week popularized the idea, the idea has existed for far longer than you might think. All the way back to 1873, when the HMS Challenger discovered megalon, megalodon teeth, which supposedly dated to only 24,000 to 11,000 years old, which would make the survival of megalodon in the modern day quite possible, and several sightings of giant sharks that are claimed to be megalodon have been made over and over. As such, megalodon is a common figure in a pseudoscience called cryptozoology, which studies supposed hidden creatures called cryptids, which are unknown to science and are typically only known from eyewitness reports, which as anyone who's taken a basic psychology class can tell you is the worst kind of evidence. Cryptozoology is also known for iconic cryptids like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, which are often explained to be a surviving population of animals only currently known from the fossil record, Gigantopithecus for Bigfoot and Plesiosaurus for Nessie. This phenomenon is called the Prehistoric Survivor Paradigm, or PSP for short, and it is one of the many problems with cryptozoology as a legitimate science which I'll probably address in more detail in later videos. But before I get too off topic, does any of the supposed evidence of Megalodon's survival actually hold water? I'm sorry. The short answer to that question is no, absolutely not. As for the reasoning, let's start out with the HMS Challenger discovery. While finding relatively young megalodon teeth might seem like compelling evidence at first glance, as it turns out, those teeth were probably not as young as first thought. It is likely that the teeth only appeared fresh due to being preserved by a thick mineral crust precipitate of manganese dioxide, and as such they had a lower decomposition rate and retained a white color during fossilization. Basically, they looked younger than they actually were, kind of like people who use Botox. It is also possible that the teeth were moved to a younger sediment after fossilization, which would not be the first time as that same problem has plagued the remains of a certain terror bird by the name of Titanus. As for the supposed sightings of megalodon-like sharks, they really don't amount to anything other than being mere fishermen's tales, no different than stories of krakens or sea serpents. As for the Meg books, once again they are pieces of fiction and as such never really made any serious claims about Megalodon survival in the first place. In fact, I've read the Meg books myself and I highly recommend them to anyone who hasn't read them yet. While they aren't always accurate, they are definitely entertaining and a million times better than the movie that came out last year. Finally, the infamous Discovery Channel special, Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives. It is actually pretty easy to figure out that this, prog that this program was fake if you know what to look for, as a quick Google search will tell you that the scientists in the special are actually paid actors. Although it does seem odd that Discovery Channel didn't really seem to try that hard to make sure people saw the disclaimers that this special wasn't real. 
In conclusion, pretty much all evidence of Megalodon survival is either the result of tall tales, inaccurate dating of fossil remains, or people misinterpreting fictional media as fact. But for those who need a bit more convincing, there are two big arguments I see when it concerns the survival of Megalodon. First is the classic, much of the ocean is unexplored, so we don't really know what's out there, which frankly is cliche and overused. Yes, the ocean is greatly unexplored, especially the deepest depths of the ocean, where light can't reach and the pressure is enough to kill you a hundred times over. This does, this does technically mean that it's possible that anything and everything could exist at the bottom of the sea floor. But, just because something is possible doesn't mean it's plausible. Remember the immense pressure I brought up like two second sentences ago? Turns out that tends to limit the size that vertebrates can reach in the deepest depths of the oceans, so it is unlikely that any large sea monsters live in the Mariana Trench, let's say. Especially not Megalodon. I have brought up both in my scientific analysis video of Deep Sea Killers, which features Megalodon quite prominently, as well as earlier in this very video that Megalodon preferred warm coastal areas. As such, it was not at all adapted to survive in the cold and dark depths of the ocean where sufficient food is hard to come by, which would be required in order for Megalodon to have existed all this time without being spotted. So if Megalodon was alive, we would have seen it by now, and transportation by sea would probably be almost, if not completely, impossible. The second argument is used for a lot of supposed prehistoric survivors, and that is the classic, well we thought the coelacanth was extinct, but now it isn't. Maybe the same is true for dinosaurs, and pterodactyls, and plesiosaurs, and megalodons. Yes, I intentionally called pterosaurs pterodactyls to show how stupid people are. For anyone not familiar, coelacanths are a group of fish which extend back to over 400 million years ago, during the late Devonian, and they were thought to have gone extinct 65 million years ago during the KPG mass extinction event. However, in 1938, a modern species of coelacanth was discovered off the southern coast of Africa, thus extending the coelacanth's reign to the present day. This has sat really well with creationists who believe that this proves that evolution is fake and not all kinds of prehistoric animals still of today, like dinosaurs, pterosaurs, plesiosaurs, and yes, megalodon. However, what creationists love to ignore is the fact that the two known species of coelacanth which, which exist today, the West Indian Ocean coelacanth and the Indonesian coelacanth, are drastically different from prehistoric coelacanths. Coelacanths were quite diverse during prehistoric times from normal looking coelacanths like coelacanthus to rather bizarre ones like Foraya to the gigantic Mawsonia. Basically, coelacanths have definitely evolved over 400 million years and as such do not in any way disprove evolution. In fact, they pretty much prove it. They also do not prove that prehistoric survivors exist all over the world, as coelacanths are actually much more difficult to preserve than animals like dinosaurs and plesiosaurs, and as such they have a much more incomplete presence in the fossil record, constantly disappearing and reappearing because they just weren't in the right conditions to fossilize. Also, post-Cretaceous coelacanth fossils have been discovered since 1938, while the same cannot be said for animals that did go extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, like dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and plesiosaurs. The same goes for Megalodon, as no fossils have ever been conclusively dated to any younger than 2.6 million years ago, providing hard proof that Megalodon did indeed go extinct around 2.5 million years ago. 
that more or less wraps up this video but doing this was actually a lot of fun so if this video does really well I may consider turning this into a new series in this series I would cover other cryptids and supposed prehistoric survivors and see whether they truly exist or not which usually you're leaning towards the not going over famous cryptids like Bigfoot the Loch Ness Monster as well as more obscure cryptids like the Lone Pine Mountain Devil and the many, many, many supposed living dinosaurs of the Congo. If I choose to go forward with this series, I will probably begin with the supposed living sauropod, Mokele Mbembe from the Congo. But before that, I will be doing the scientific analysis of Jurassic Fight Club's sixth episode, Hunter Becomes Hunted, followed by, finally, some more natural history videos. That's all for today. Be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button to help me make more videos like this. Hope you learned something new today, and as always, be on the lookout for my next video. This is Paleo Nerd signing out.